Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. We haven't talked to you guys for a while, so we figured for our last week we'll do some, some voicing. Yeah, some voicing because I know you guys probably missed us. And we miss you guys yes. so very much. So hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you and your families are finding peace in every day. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to talk about what is the history of the DJ. So first we talk about the history of the DJ. Here's a little history of me. A couple summers ago, probably, uh, I had a friend who started DJ, DJing and she had bought all the stuff and so she kind of taught me a little bit about this. I would say in no means am I an expert or even relatively good, but I do know some and we thought this would be really fun to talk about. So, we're going first today we're going to talk about the history and how DJing got started. So. Who was the first DJ ever? Mr. Holbrook, do you know who this guy is? I can tell by the picture, is it? It's okay if you don't know. He looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. If any of you can, if you guess him right away, let us know. Okay, so our first DJ ever in history was Edison. Oh. Yes, because he invented the phonograph cylinder in 1877, which is your little instrument dealie at the top. And so what he invented while he was working on the telegraph machine and the telephone was he had the little cylinder, which you can kind of see in there. It's like a mahogany brownish color. And so, and then he would inscribe a series of lines and dashes and such like that. And then if you roll the needle around it, it would play... It would either play recorded sounds, and then he also invented how to actually record with this as well. Um, so yes, this was his first invention. This was the first invention in the world that record and could play back sound. So he is actually how DJing got started. Interesting. I did not know yes. that. Mm -hmm. Long time ago. Cool guy. Uh, and then, so then we have Ray Newby. And this is a picture of him down at the bottom. Uh, so in 1906, uh, he was 16 years old, and he recorded the first ever song to be played on the radio. Wow. Yes, very cool. Um, and then this is a later picture of him. They definitely did not have that technology in 1906. Kind of I wasn't like... alive then, but I can guarantee you. <laughs> that, that's a picture probably from the 30s or 40s or so. Kind of looks like my roommate from college. A little bit, yeah, it does. Yeah. That's weird. It is weird. Let's let them know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. So, Mr. Holbrook, what does the DJ stand for? I've been trying to actually think of that. And oh, really? I have no idea what DJ stands for. So no, It is. Dow Jones? No. Okay. I, it was Very relevant to this time, though. No. It's just a jockey. Oh. Yes. Um. So... It was first used in 1935 with Martin Block, and that's the guy at the top of the page there. Okay, um, So he had a show called Make Believe Ballroom, and that's exactly what it was. It was, he pretended to be in a ballroom, and he played songs to be broadcasted into people's homes. Wow. Because, you know, like back in this time, we didn't have TVs yet, so radio was the thing that brought people together. So he created this so people could have ballroom dances and wherever they were at in their homes or in community places and stuff without actually having a live band playing. Well, that's really neat. That's very convenient for people it who aren't able to get to the ballroom at all times. Mm -hmm. So yes, that was him. And so between the time with him and then up to the 1980s, DJing and radio was growing. DJing kind of stays the same. But then we had Jimmy Seville, who is English version of Casey Kasem. And I could talk about Casey Kasem for like a whole week. He's a pretty I cool guy. I love Casey Kasem. Yes. Um, except we're not going to talk about him. I'm just going to mention him now and then we're done. So. You can look him up though. Yeah, if you guys cool. get bored, look him up. He's really cool. Um, so anyways, so Jimmy here was credited making DJ move from radio to live performances. So he hosted BBC's music chart show, Top of the Pops, which is like a top 40s for England. And 1943, he organized the first DJ dance party and he played jazz records. Wow. So And he did this live. So and this is 1943. So instead of having a live band, which was normal, like that's what 
the standard that's was. what the standard was i mean like you no one really had the luxury of having equipment to play and record things so you had live musicians and so he had the first ever dance party where everything was recorded and played oh imagine if we had like live bands at everything nowadays yeah that's to think that was the standard yes now we're now this is the standard yes huh he's the one who made this the standard yep um, he claims to be the first person to ever use two record players at the same time. There's nothing to back that up, but oh, that's I mean to keep the music going. Yeah, or to use like two different songs. Like, well, I don't know when you think of like classic DJ, I don't know. Like, I picture like the two, the, the two, yeah, 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 the two turntables, you know, and this mm -hmm. on it. So, but um, very interesting. Supposedly, he was the first one to do that. Oh. So quite the claim. Yeah, and then here's a picture of him. He's seems like a very interesting dude. Like his glasses. Yeah, very colorful. So that's a little bit of background. So I know that I've had you, several of you, do Incredible Box before. I think it's super cool, and this kind of helps us get into the mindset of DJing. So. Uh, it, the, I'll have a link in attached with this um, for the Incredibox website. Make sure you do try web version free. You can download the app, but um, if you're doing it on your computer, web version. Um, there's like three different versions you can do once you click on web version. Um, so you can choose, you can experiment with all of them. Uh, so you click and drag the different clothing onto the men and it creates different um, songs. Uh, and I know that my band kids have done this before, so, um, but m my challenge to you guys is, so, and our first picture here, that's when everything is set up before you start. So we have this little thing up in the, I don't know, top, top of the page on the far left. And then on, you can add pictures. And so like on the second picture here, I gave them clothing and then it filled in with the colors. And once you get all the colors filled in, it makes a very specific song, and then you get the special bonus. And there's three bonuses you can get with this. So play around with it, do different songs, and see if you guys can complete all three bonuses. I had been using this website for a really long time, and I didn't realize that there was like special hidden bonuses until like two years into using it. So now, yeah, so play around with it, see if you can get the bonuses, and let us know. There's nothing you need to record for it or anything. Just have fun. Yeah, just have fun. So let us know if you have questions. Have a musical day. We yes. miss you all. Yes, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Yes, talk to you soon.